Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Laurence and I post art videos once a week. Today I have something a bit different than usual. I have a book review, which I have never done before. So it's very exciting, especially when you look at this book, a book all about landscapes, which is just so fitting for me. I've been painting a lot of landscapes in different styles, experimenting a lot. The title of this book is Landscape Painting Now, From Pop Abstraction to New Romanticism. It is written by Barry Schwabsky. From my perspective of self-taught artist, I feel like this book is very positive in general. It is very informative. There's a lot of different styles in there. I thought we could just have a little look at that book. So just like the first page here, it's just so beautiful. So inspiring. I love to be able to see the textures. And after having a look at this book, I feel very inspired. And I feel like a good idea for a future video would be to take one of these paintings or one of these styles and try to replicate it. Maybe do a master study or do one of my own landscapes, but in, let's say, a similar style to this just to practice, not to steal somebody else's style, not to profit from it, but just as a means of practicing, of expanding my horizons, just trying something different, which I think is always good. So here we have the table of content. We have an introduction and then it goes by genre. So first you have realism and beyond. Then we have post-pop landscapes, then new romanticism, constructed realities, abstracted topographies, and complicated vistas. And under each of these genres, you have a list of artists. So it's a very good tool to be able to discover new artists. There's a bunch of artists here that I knew before that are very famous, but there was a lot of them I didn't know. So it was fun for me to discover some extremely talented artists. So here we start with an introduction from Barry Schwabsky that talks a little bit about the fact that most of these artists, even if they are placed in one category, have made work which could be part of many categories or that they evolve in their career. So in this book, they are placed in a category, but they, they don't necessarily only do that type of painting. I don't know if I'm being clear. The drawback would be, I think, this part, because for me, I haven't studied art. So the language that is used to describe art, the art world, is not something that I'm very familiar with. So when I see it in these long sentences, first of all, I don't really know what we're talking about. And it's hard for me to stay focused on what the author is saying. I just wanna get through this and start with the fun illustrations. So yeah, I think this is still very interesting. I remember I read it all and it's nice because every time they talk about a specific artist, then they show some pictures, they have a lot of examples. So it's nice to be able to visually see what he's talking about, but I cannot say that I remember any of this. <laughs> after a few weeks. Yeah, these sentences are very long. And I think usually I'm pretty intelligent. I'm able to deal with long sentences, but I think it's just that I'm unfamiliar with this subject. So it's just harder for me. But if you study art or if you're more familiar with art and art theory, then I think you wouldn't have any problems. And I think this is still very valuable and I will probably go back and reread this uh, a bit later so yeah you have this introduction and then they start talking about realism and beyond and when you start a new chapter you have a, one or two pages that describe this chapter which is very interesting the sentences are long too sometimes so sometimes it's a bit hard to understand but for the most part it's very interesting and it relates directly to what you're going to see next. And then again, there's a lot of examples when they talk about specific artists, then they refer to the pages 
in which they are featuring. So it's very interesting to read all of this. And what I like about this part in particular is that they explain that realism is kind of a struggle for an artist because you will never be able to reproduce exactly what you see in a painting. And even with the painters that are photorealists, like, let me see if I can find some. We have some at the end here, like this. This is photorealism by the artist Richard Estes. When he did this, he had to focus on something. Maybe he focused on the lighting, which as a viewer, you see the lighting and you you focus, you notice the lighting, but if you were walking in the forest at that time, maybe you wouldn't have thought about the lighting. So I think it's like this, this struggle when you want to paint something realistically, even if you're perfect, it looks like a picture, it's still a painting. It's not real. Anyway, uh, but you see that there are painters that are in this category that are not photorealist. And it's fine. So yeah, it's just very interesting. It makes you think about realism in a different way. And I guess that's why this chapter is named Realism and Beyond. And then after these few introductory pages, we start with the artist spread. So that's where you get to discover different artists, what they did in their career briefly, very briefly. So some of these artists did other things many other subjects other than landscapes, but in this book, we're focusing on landscapes. They talk about what their workflow looks like, what their interest is, sometimes a little bit about their method. Now we have a painter, Pat de Groot, who was born in London in 1930, uh, that died in 2018. And here they talk about how this painter was inspired by his kayak outings. So he was very inspired, as you can see, by the sea. So yeah, then we have Sylvia Peel Mac Mangold, which for me, I don't think this is realist. This is a painter that used to paint the same trees in different season. Well, this was one of her interests. She probably did a lot more. Other types of painting, this is titled My Cubism. So it's interesting because it's in the realism and beyond, but it's also inspired by cubism. Here we have this picture. This is the same picture that we saw here. Beautiful. By Lois Dodd, one of my new discoveries, a new artist that I didn't know before, but I'm very inspired by her work. Oh, another thing that I like in this book is that there's a lot of female artists in there. And if you know a little bit about the art world, you know that for a long, 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 long time, most of the artists that were talked about were male artists and all the female artists were operating in their male counterpart shadows. And this is changing. Now in museums, we see a lot of exhibitions that are focusing on female artists' work. But this is nice to see that there is a lot of female representation in this book. This is so beautiful. I love the simplistic rendition of landscapes here. You really see the essence of the landscape and yeah, I love it. It's hard doing something simply, very hard. Then this is a very impressive page, but then there's more. Bunch of tiny landscapes. This is an artist that did some plein air and she did a lot of 8 by 10 canvases. Very pretty. So it's very inspiring to see all the different styles. Sometimes painters painted different canvas and then when you put them together, then you get the final image. This is interesting too. Or just the color choices that some people use. You really see here, like the faded colors. It looks like an old picture. It feels nostalgic in a way. Oh, 
Oh, I think I skipped this page when I looked at this book. I read all the different sections, but I went quickly over the artists. I'm planning on reading about all of these artists at another time, but I just wanted to see every section and have a quick look at all the images. But yeah, this is realistic. This is very beautiful. But I don't think I could paint that way. <laughs> it looks like so much work. This is the photorealist painter that I was telling you about a little bit earlier. Then you have another one here, Franz Gerch from Switzerland. Looks like pictures. So many tiny details in this one. It's very impressive. And now we move on to post-pop landscapes. And what is interesting about this style is that a lot of these artists that did post-pop landscapes painted these landscapes before pop art was invented. So this book says that the most popular pop art artists like Warhol or Lichtenstein were inspired by these painters that we're going to see in this book to create their work. It's not post-pop because they did these artworks after the pop movement but it's because they have elements that are foundational for pop art, if I understand correctly. But this is a section that I love so much. I had no idea how pop art could be represented in landscapes. So I like that it's very graphic, it is very magical, but then you get Stuff like this too that is a bit less detailed. Alex Katz that is very a very popular, very well-known artist. So you have some of his works. And then there's David Hockney, which is also a very well-known artist. He's from the UK, but he works in Los Angeles. But the book says that he came back to Yorkshire in 2007. But maybe he went back to the States after. I'm not sure but I love his colors. I want a book from him. I know that there's many books from him that exist. I want to find one. I need one, I think. I love his colors. The textures, the details. This is just amazing. It just looks like a magical world. Look at this. I love it. This is the image that we see here the cover image. And apparently this painting is a series of 20 canvases that he put together. And the total size of this painting is 144 by 240 inches. Must be huge. Here I can see the pop art inspiration in this, in the color choices and these magical worlds. is so nice. I love this. And it's nice because they tell you what they used as medium. So it's interesting because sometimes I feel like I feel like this would have been an illustration, a digital illustration, but it was oil and acrylic on canvas. So I'm very impressed. Oh, I love this. This is another image that we saw in the beginning of the book. This is by Dania. Hyde Camp from the USA. He lives in Brooklyn now. This is beautiful. I just love these textures and colors. So I feel like this would be a good style to try to replicate maybe just for an exercise. Amazing. Then we get into New Romanticism. So the author talks about the romantic conceptualism, which is based in nostalgia of the past. But I think if I understand correctly, the New Romanticism is kind of this concept, but applied to the present or applied to something that is happening right now. So 
you kind of have this window into something that's happening now uh, but you still sometimes get this nostalgic feeling or this very atmospheric feeling so i don't know this is very interesting and i think this artist in particular Vern dawson was inspired by folk art which we can see the reference and what he's doing But yeah, I think that's what I understood about this style. This is so beautiful. Wow, I love her color choices. This is Mama Andersen, a painter from Sweden. And then here you have some work with a lot of texture by Anselm Kiefer from Germany. Oh, this is beautiful. This looks like a magical world or a scene from a book. I love the color choices. I love the compositions. This is Thomas Sanchez from Cuba. Oh, this is beautiful too. I remember when I saw this, I was amazed. From Jenny Figgis from Ireland. It says that this artist often revisits 18th century in her scandalous reinterpretations of canonical Rococo paintings. She redoes them in a different style. You can see some elements of Rococo paintings in her work. She uses pouring techniques, which creates these distortions and very weird, oozy landscapes. <laughs> so I love it. I love it so much. It looks like they're melting. You know, but you can see the Rococo inspiration. Love it. This is beautiful. I don't know for you, but this book just makes me want to paint. I'm amazed by all these styles or all of these subjects that come directly from someone's imagination. Because for me, when I paint, I use a reference. I, yes, I can modify a landscape, but it always stays a bit more in the realistic realm, kind of. But this, this is just surrealist. It looks like scenes from a, a dream, kind of. Yeah, it just looks like you're witnessing something. Something's happening and nobody knows you're there, but you're witnessing something. Then we get into constructed realities. This was interesting. This is a chapter about paintings that create a new reality. So it can be in the textures or just an invented world completely so it's very interesting or like this artist that focuses on frames so you don't really see what the painting is or sometimes it's just a door frame or a window frame you don't see what's outside you just see the frame or this guy who focuses on Edibles, sweets, little tiny worlds, this, this is magical. I love this artist's work. This is Alison Elizabeth Taylor from the USA. She lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. She's inspired by cut and painted pieces of wood by marquetry marquetry is when you take different types of wood different types of grain and you build something so you can see artisans do that with cutting boards and you know they create these beautiful patterns it's kind of what she does in her paintings and you can really see it here with all the different types of wood grains it's very nice this is the artist i was talking about 
which paints scenes that happen through a frame, but you you don't really see the scene, you pretty much only see the frame. Beautiful. So this is very impressive for me too, because how do you imagine that? How do you get from being a normal person to doing things like this? This is Lisa Yuskavage from the USA. And when I went to New York, I saw some of her paintings and they were so beautiful. I think I saw this one. So beautiful. I think I saw some of her too. Inca SN High. Yeah, I did in New York. This is just so nice. How do you think of this? And how do you sketch? How do you plan for these paintings? This is my question. Then you get into abstract topographies and this is another chapter that I love so much. I love my abstract art and I love my landscape so it feels like this was everything I love put together. And I've always wanted to work a little bit on abstracting my landscapes. So this just reinforces that desire that I have. I think it would be interesting for me to focus on that a bit more intentionally. This is Cecily Brown. I saw her in the um, MoMA, I think. Was it MoMA that had an, an exhibition on her or was it the Met? One of these two when I went to New York. And it was nice because it was like her whole career. So I saw a lot of other subjects, not only landscapes. She did a lot of portraits. She did a lot of work with the gaze, so people in front of their vanities, but with mirrors. So she worked a lot with this concept of the gaze and vanities. This is just so nice. Anyway, so I kind of feel like abstracting my work a little bit more. There's very good examples of different things you can do in this book. I love all the textures. I love the lines. Oh, I love this. It looks like this beach is just melting. Oh, it's just so nice. <laughs> I'm trying to go quick because I think you should see it for yourself if you're interested. What I would have thought would have been nice was if they added some Rutko in there because Rutko did some abstract landscapes too. He's known for his rectangular shapes and his really simple lines. But before he did that, I think it was before, he did some abstract landscapes that were really nice. I think it would have fit in this section. And then at the end, the last chapter is about complicated vistas. And it says that it's kind of a mix of a lot of styles, but they talk about vistas as not just a view, but a view into the distance that takes the gaze or the imagination past a succession of planes or objects. So it's just, it's more than a view. <laughs> but see how this language can be a bit complicated when you're not from that world. I feel like I don't understand everything. That's, that's what it is. But like, I think that this is a complicated vista. At the same time, I see this and I'm like, yeah, this works. <laughs> so I think it's like a view of a landscape but that passes a message or that makes you feel something like this is very post-apocalyptic and very eerie I feel like this could have been in the realism and beyond section as well, but this is what the author said. It's not because some work is in one section, one chapter, that it couldn't be in the others. So I think that I feel like some of these could work in many chapters. 
so I think we're almost done. Here we go. A few pages left. Oh, this is embroidered. This is very nice. And at the end, we can find the biographies of all of the mentioned artists. So very interesting stuff. And that's it. It's a big book. It was pretty expensive. I will list it in description. I'll give you an Amazon link if you're interested. If you buy this book using my link, I will get a small commission because this is an affiliate link. This is something that I've started doing not too long ago. So it doesn't cost more for you, but it gives me a small commission that I will reuse to buy art stuff. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know that I'm not a scholar in the arts world. I cannot give you the most educated opinion or the most educated review. Let's say this is the review of a noob. Welcome to the review of a self-taught artist. And I really love this book, even though I don't understand everything that's written. <laughs> it has so much value for me when it comes to inspiration, to new ideas. And I have to say that when I had a look at this book, I had to stop from time to time just to sketch because I had random ideas popping through my head that I had to sketch on, on paper so I don't forget them. And then I would come back to this book and continue having a look at it. So I really recommend it if you like landscapes, if you like modern art, I think that this is a very good book for you. And like, it's just such a beautiful coffee table book. There's something for everybody in this. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you're still here, please leave a like, a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you would like to see more book review, let me know. But that's it. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.